Beijing just tightened rare earth controls, shifting leverage from rocks to magnet know-how. Control the magnet, control the motor, control the motor, and you set the clock for EVs, wind, and parts of defense. In the next few minutes, we'll look into what rare earths actually are, what changed in China's rules, where the mine to magnet choke points sit, who depends on them, how the US and allies are escalating, and what it means for costs, timelines, and investors, minus the hype. Rare earth minerals are a group of 17 elements, including the 15 lanthanides, plus scandium and yttrium. Contrary to what many believe, and what the name suggests, they aren't scarce in Earth's crust. They're scarce in usable form. Their headline product is permanent magnets. Neodymium iron boron delivers exceptional power density. Dysprosium and terbium harden high temperature performance. These magnets sit wherever size, weight, and efficiency matter most. EV traction motors and large wind turbines. In addition to guidance, radar, industrial robots, hard drives, and speakers. You can thrift heavy rare earths or switch to ferrites in lower performance segments, but at the frontier, premium EVs and certain military systems, neodymium iron boron magnets remains the gold standard. So what changed? Until recently, China's regime acted mostly like a materials gate. Selected elements and some upstream products needed export licenses. End-use checks happened occasionally, but the sharpest friction sat before you reached magnets. That hasn't gone away. What's new is the scope and the location of control, where controls now extend to the midstream and downstream enablers. Intermediate materials, such as separated oxides, specific alloys, and magnet precursors. Production means two. Key equipment and process know-how for separation, metallization, and magnet manufacturing. And finally, end-use verification. Explicit checks for defense-adjacent and advanced electronics applications. In practice, even components with small Chinese rare earth content, or parts made using Chinese process technology, can trigger a license review. This moves the gate from access to raw inputs to permission for magnet-grade materials, equipment, and process recipes. The layers that determine whether specifications can be met consistently. If licensing now targets magnet recipes, the next question is scale where the reserves sit, who mines them, and who controls the midstream. According to the US Geological Survey, global rare earth reserves are estimated at over 90 million tonnes. China holds the largest single share of about 44 million tonnes, with major deposits in Inner Mongolia and southern ion adsorption clays. The US, on the other hand, has about 1.9 million tonnes of rare earth reserves primarily at Mountain Pass, California. On the mining front, the world output reached roughly 390,000 tonnes. China contributed close to 70%, amounting to 270,000 tonnes. The United States produced about 45,000 tonnes. Additional volumes came from Australia, Myanmar, Thailand, Nigeria, Vietnam and Brazil. But while meaningful reserves and mining exist outside China, separation and refining capacity is overwhelmingly concentrated in China, at around 90%, according to the International Energy Agency. High-performance magnet manufacturing is similarly dominated by China, who controls about 93% of global capacity. China's lead comes from decades of policy and from building mine-to-magnet industrial parks. It kept the hardest middle steps at home, long chemical separation runs, converting oxides to metal, making specialty alloys, and the precise pressing, alignment, and sintering that turn powders into high-spec magnets. New mines outside China add ore, but without non-Chinese separation plants and qualified magnet lines, much of that material still flows back to China or waits in a queue. Standing up those midstream plants and getting them certified for automotive and defense use is a multi-year job, not a one-quarter fix. Reserves are global, mining is concentrated, and processing is centralized. The choke point sits after the mine, in separation and magnets, where specifications and timelines are ultimately decided. Which is why the market didn't wait. Policy at the recipe layer hit prices and plans immediately. Macro context explains the split reaction. Rare earth miners rose as investors priced tighter supply and policy tailwinds. MP materials rallied more than 36% over five sessions, climbing up to $98.65. In Australia, Linas Rare Earths popped 5.3% on October 9th and traded as much as 8.5% intraday in the following sessions. Peers also jumped. Iluka rallied 6.3%, Northern Minerals 43%, 
Arafura 18% during the sector surge. Downstream users, advanced electronics and platform hardware saw higher volatility as export licensing risk moved into procurement models and Chinese magnet export licensing visibly tightened. Exposure concentrates in EV traction motors, large wind turbines and defense electronics, segments most dependent on high-spec neodymium iron boron magnets. Procurement responses cluster around three levers, buffers of critical assemblies, which tie up working capital, dual sourcing of magnet suppliers, which is slow and costly to qualify, and redesign, thrifting dysprosium and terbium or shifting motor topology, which trades efficiency, weight or noise. Each path implies cost, time or performance concessions. Markets moved first, policy answered next, because dates and rules decide who blinks and when. In the United States, a clock is now on the wall. From January 1st, 2027, Chinese origin rare earth metals and magnets are barred across the entire chain, mined, refined, separated, melted and produced. US Defense Supply Act, DFAS 225 forces substitution and localization on a fixed timeline. At the same time, Washington has escalated tariff pressure as the broader trade fight wraps around rare earths and magnets. In the EU, the Critical Raw Materials Act locks 2030 benchmarks to finance midstream on European soil. 10% extraction, 40% processing, 25% recycling and a diversification cap of less than 65% from any single third country at each stage. Two timers now define the field. 2027 for US defence, 2030 for the EU and everything else must work backward from those dates. With the dates locked in, capital moved to the middle of the chain. The first beneficiaries are the operators that actually commission. Separation plants, oxide to metal lines and magnet factories with audited automotive and defence lots. In the United States, Noveon and Linas announced a partnership to supply finished magnets into defence and commercial programmes, pairing non-Chinese feedstock with domestic magnet capacity to meet the new rules. At the same time, MP Materials and the Department of Defense set a 10-year $110 per kilogram floor for neodymium praseodymium with offtake backing. The floor guarantees minimum revenue, the offtake anchors demand. Together, they finance US separation and magnet build-out and lower commissioning and qualification risk. Across Europe, Neo Performance brought Estonia's modern mass production magnet plant online for auto and wind, an EU midstream node finally in service. In the slipstream, process chemistry and equipment suppliers that shorten extraction trains, lift yields or cut waste are positioned to benefit as the 2027 US defence deadline and the 2030 EU targets pull projects forward. In this phase, advantage accrues to teams that commission, certify and run at spec consistently this is a magnet story with a mining preface. China moved the gate from raw inputs to recipes, and that's where leverage sits. Reserves are global, mining is concentrated, processing is centralized. The choke point is separation and magnets. Markets reacted first, policy set the timers. Scoreboard going forward, license approvals, real commissioning run rates, and OEM design shifts. Which signal will move pricing fastest over the next six months? License approvals, new magnet lines ramping, or motor design changes. Subscribe to StratiQ for fact-based deep dives, turn on alerts and share your take in the comments.